right now, we have a young man who is doing amazing things. We're going to hit on a more serious topic. It's voting uh, with the election right around the corner. Teos Wynn is here <laughs> with Millennial Civil Rights Campaign, and he's joining us at the table. My apologies on that, everyone. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Welcome to you? the show. Yes, oh, good to be here. Yes, thank you. Thank he's been you. having a great thank time you. watching us do our thing and watching the Spelman students, which is really it leads us right into this question. Tell us about why you started the Millennial Civil Rights Campaign. So the Millennial Civil Rights Campaign overall, it was really uh, three factors that led to the beginning of it. The first one was a interview I saw with uh, former President Barack Obama, mm -hmm. where he really challenged people to not only uh, uh, observe and analyze the issues that are occurring in society but take it a step further and create spaces and cultures that we want to see in society. Right. Mm. And then from there, uh, really just the surmounting issues ultimately, mm. going on on a national scale, all the tensions, the racial rhetoric, yeah. all the things that are going on. And so I really want to do something and I felt like a response was needed, yeah. but the response had to be bigger than me. Yes. And yes. the response had to be generational. So we created this campaign to really create a generational response for generational change and justice. What do you think is the biggest issue facing millennials? I mean, you said, oh. it's, you know, it's a plethora obviously, but what do you think the the biggest thing is? Uh, I, I think it's twofold. One of the biggest issues I think right now is fear. Mm. Uh, a fear of being next in a lot of regards when we talk about police brutality, when we talk about gun violence, mm. uh, when we talk about the burden yes. of student debt, mm -hmm. uh, the fear of being next. I think uh, wow. the second fear, uh, the second thing is really frustration. The, the idea that things aren't going to change. And uh, the interesting thing is I had a conversation with Ambassador Young last week and in that conversation, he, he was talking about the difference in our fight versus their fight yes. mm, and yes. their generation. And one of the main things he said was in their day, they were gaining progress, gaining mm. progress. Everything was to fight to gain ground legislatively. Whereas in our time, our fight is twofold. So not only are we trying to gain progress, but we're also trying to be proactive and not losing the progress that they gained wow, wow, wow. on the other end with like the Voters' Rights Act and other things that are being challenged right yeah. now. Well, yeah. in that effort to, to not lose that, that progress or that progression, what do you think, in your opinion, is prohibiting this younger generation from going out and voting? Ooh, I, I think it's a couple of things. One of the main things I think is relevance, and people just not understanding the relevance of actually getting involved politically. Uh, I think that most people don't realize that most of their day-to-day -day is dictated by state and local elections, mm -hmm. and so they choose not to really engage in those spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I think is understanding. And so the better that people understand how to engage in the political process, I think they will. Can I insert this? I, sure. I, I think the idea comes from we think we, we know the president is the big kahuna. He's the big right. guy. He's the one who runs it all. That's what we think. So we think if we put the person that we want in office, then everything will change mm -hmm. on the lower levels when it should be reversed. Mm -hmm. exactly. mm -hmm. It should be reversed. I think we need to start preaching that and actually uh, making sure that we're drilling that in the young mm -hmm. people's minds Absolutely. that it, it, the power it's on the local level, right? Mm -hmm. Right first, right. Right. absolutely. Yeah, I think absolutely. that needs to be stated. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think that um, millennials and Gen, uh, what is, what do you call, what do we call them? Gen Z. Gen Z. Yes, Gen Z. Gen X is in Gen Z. What do you think that millennials, well, younger people, what do you think that they're thinking right now about this current election, especially with all of these candidates? I think one of the the. I think a few things. The, the first thing I think people are thinking is really who's going to speak up where gun control and common mm -hmm. sense gun reform is concerned, mm -hmm. expanding mm -hmm. universal background checks, yep. and what are we doing to be proactive in preventing the next mass shooting Absolutely. or tragedy. Mm -hmm. I think that's on a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. I also think climate change and the climate mm -hmm. crisis yeah. yes. is also really on a lot a of people's minds. It's a big one. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It is. Uh, in addition to that, I think also human rights and individual choice mm -hmm. is something else that millennials are really paying attention wow. to. Do you think that that needs to be touched on in this? That's, that, that is what the um, millennials and Gen Z are looking forward to seeing in the debates? Uh, absolutely. People touching on that? Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. think so. I think those are going to be hot topics. We mm -hmm. want to have you on a little bit uh, later on in this month because sure. we want to continue this conversation. Yes. Because we want to hear continue to hear from you. You're a brilliant young man. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. You are here. To keep up with all the things uh, uh, Teos is doing, please visit MillennialCivilRights.com. Let's give it up for this amazing yes. young man. Thank you. 